To understand why portfolio analysis is so important, we need to understand the landscape of purchasing, as it was called then, before Peter Kralich published his seminal article in 1983. I worked in purchasing prior to the publication of the article, and while there was a wide variety of levels of maturity of purchasing, most purchasing was a clerical activity. Most practitioners were involved in negotiating deals or tactical purchases, and were often involved at the last minute in more important purchases, if they were involved at all. There were few repeatable methodologies used by purchasing practitioners, and the main tool in use was Pareto analysis. Pareto's principle is sometimes known as the 80-20 rule, and I use Pareto analysis to allocate my time and focus my efforts on the higher value spends. So here is a typical spend portfolio with a small number of categories representing the majority of the total spend portfolio. The opposite is also true. The majority of the categories by number, the majority of the transactions, and the majority of the suppliers represent a small proportion of the total value. So is Pareto analysis the foundation upon which to build a range of purchasing strategies? Or are there some problems with Pareto? Well, yes, there are some problems with Pareto. And they are about focusing. There are two key problems. Firstly, Pareto is a prioritizing tool, not a strategy tool. Secondly, Pareto implies paying attention to the vital few. The corollary is that we do not pay as much attention to the long tail of low value spends. This is dangerous, as there may be showstoppers in the tail of low value spends that causes problems unless we manage them carefully. Let's say that we spent 20% of our time managing lower value spends, one of which is procuring tax advice. As a result, we get poor tax advice and we have to pay 10 times more tax than budgeted. The amount paid to the tax office might be a thousand times greater than the bill for tax advice. You can see why spending less time managing lower spend purchases might not be such a smart idea. So let's fast forward to 1983. Peter Kralich published an article in the Harvard Business Review called Purchasing Must Become Supply Management, and the journey from purchasing to procurement began. There are five key ideas that Kralich introduced. Firstly, the idea that organizations need a supply strategy and should not just focus purchasing attention upon doing deals for high-value spends. Secondly, the idea that different strategies are needed for different categories. Thirdly, the idea that risk needs to be addressed as well as spend, cost and value. Fourthly, the idea that organisations should consider supply markets and not just suppliers, categories and spend values. Finally, the idea that organisations should think about purchasing inputs strategically, that the senior leadership team the C-suite in contemporary parlance, should ask, what is our total value chain and what is our risk position? Let's begin by exploring one key element of what Kralich wrote about, portfolio analysis. Portfolio analysis is a practical tool to segment categories within your spend portfolio. Let's start with spend as we can build a bridge from Pareto analysis to Kralich. Like Pareto, Kralich suggests that categories can be dimensioned, but Kralich suggested that it is not just about spend, as in Pareto analysis, but about the importance of purchasing, which is a composite of costs, total costs, value added, and profit contribution. We can distinguish between low and high importance. What Kralich adds to Pareto analysis is an appreciation of supply market complexity, which he saw as a composite of the market structure, like monopoly or oligopoly, the rate of market change, barriers to entry, and market complexity. We can distinguish between low and high complexity. That leads us to a four-box model with the following labels, non-critical, leverage, bottleneck, and strategic. Let's look at each of the quadrants in turn. First of all, non-critical. Non-critical categories are the day-to-day -day purchases of low-value, low-risk acquisitions, sometimes labelled routine. A typical example is stationary. 
While much purchasing effort is often focused on managing these categories, other quadrants deserve more attention. For example, professional services such as legal services. While the annual spend may be a small proportion of the organization's total spend, these categories warrant attention because of the implications of non-availability, poor quality, market shortages, or distortions like monopolies. Proof that 30 years after publication, Kralich's ideas are still not fully understood is that many procurement strategies seem to treat all categories as if they were leverage. Kralich's point is that cost savings are not the only concern of procurement strategy, even though they may be appropriate for categories like this, but not for categories like this. Let's say that we work for a company making chocolate. It is no surprise that the senior leadership team would not trust tactical deal makers with buying cocoa. The market is complex, subject to imbalances between supply and demand, and yet is critical to production and, of course, to profitability. Kralich's point is that the chocolate maker needs a strategy for cocoa, not just a series of ad hoc deals. Kralich argued that this required a change in thinking, a change in behaviour, and a change in capability. So there we have it, an introduction to Peter Kralich's portfolio analysis, a technique which is one of the milestones on the progression of purchasing based in the storeroom to procurement addressing the boardroom. Let me finish with a quote from Dick Russell. Kralich made us think about what we are doing when spending someone else's money. The abiding challenge is to advocate that we have to do more than simply save it.